Imagine The Sopranos without Tony Soprano. Hard to picture, right? But James Gandolfini wasn't always the first choice. In fact, during his first audition, he got so frustrated, he stormed out mid-scene. The man who became TV's toughest wise guy nearly walked away before it even began. But what if he hadn't gotten a second chance? Now we're about to reveal five other actors who nearly landed the role of Tony Soprano, and it'll change how you see the show forever. So get this, David Chase, the mastermind behind The Sopranos, originally had an Aussie in mind for Tony Soprano. Yep, Anthony LaPaglia. You might know him as Jack Malone from Without a Trace. When LaPaglia got his hands on the pilot script, he was hooked and even met up with Chase to discuss the role. They were ready to roll, but then things got, well, a little complicated. LaPaglia had his own spin on Tony, less Gabagool and more I don't know Shakespeare. In the end, he chose to do a play instead. Chase later mentioned that LaPaglia was considered for a different role in a movie subplot that never saw the light of day. Imagine The Sopranos with an Australian Tony. Bet you'd be ordering shrimp on the Barbie instead of baked ziti. Oh! Next up, we've got Ray Liotta, famous for his central role as Henry Hill in Goodfellas. Now, there's this widespread belief that he was offered the role of Tony in The Sopranos. However, this is actually more of a misunderstanding. The truth is that he was offered a role in the series, but it was actually Ralph Cifaretto, not Tony Soprano. Liotta turned it down because he didn't want to repeat himself with another mafia role, and plus, he was busy with Hannibal at the time. But hey, Liotta eventually found his way into the Sopranos universe with a role in The Many Saints of Newark. So I guess it all came full circle in the end. Get the fuck out of here, to Tommy. <laughs> I almost had him. I almost had him. All right, now here's a fun tidbit for you. You know John Ventimiglia, the guy who played Artie Bucco, Tony's childhood buddy, and your favorite Italian chef? Well, he actually auditioned to be the boss himself, Tony Soprano, and even tried out for Polly Walnuts. But while he didn't end up cracking those roles, the producers clearly saw something they liked and gave him the part of Artie, which, let's be honest, turned out to be perfect for him. Now get this, Gandolfini didn't just outshine Ventimiglia in the Sopranos auditions, nope. They both went head-to-head -head for roles in The Juror and a Broadway production of A Streetcar Named Desire. And guess who won those two? So poor Ventimiglia was always a step behind, but hey, at least he got to serve pasta to the mob, right? It's like a martini, but it's from Albania. I never heard of that. Well, apparently they go down real easy. Now picture this. Michael Rispoli, one of the final three guys up for the role of Tony Soprano. In a chat on the Talking Sopranos podcast, Rispoli spilled the beans about his wild audition experience. His manager kept getting these mixed signals. One minute, Rispoli's the favorite. The next, it's Gandolfini. Eventually, they gave the nod to Gandolfini, and honestly, Rispoli couldn't even be mad about it. Like Ventimiglia said, Gandolfini was just too nice to hold a grudge against. But losing out on Tony wasn't the end for Rispoli. Far from it. He ended up landing the role of Jackie Aprile, who pops up in the first season. So, yeah, Rispoli might not have been Tony, but he's still got to be a part of the family, and in the world of The Sopranos, that's not too shabby, right? Sit down. Finally, here's a wild one for you. Steven Van Zant, the guitar-slinging legend from Bruce Springsteen's band, almost became Tony Soprano. Crazy, right? At the time, Stevie had zero acting experience, but David Chase wanted fresh faces, so he was in the mix. But, you know, no experience meant no dice for the big boss role. But here's where it gets interesting. Van Zant actually had a hand in casting James Gandolfini. He spotted Gandolfini and was like, hey, this guy was a killer in true romance. He's the one. Imagine Van Zant's Tony Soprano, a little more humor, a lot less menace. Would have been a totally different show. But instead, Stevie ends up as Silvio Dante, Tony's consigliere. A pretty sweet gig for a guy who'd never acted before. Just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in. Who knew casting The Sopranos could have gone in so many different directions? It's crazy to think how close we came to having an entirely different show, but in the end, everything worked out the way it was meant to. So next time you're watching The Sopranos, take a moment to appreciate all the actors who almost played a different role. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe for more deep dives into the world of The Sopranos. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay safe out there.